the changes that I've seen over the years since I've been in the in this reggae game. Um, it's more creative now, you know. When I just started out, the the trend was Dover still the one rhythm cover our song. Now it's it's changed. It's more creating a new a new rhythm, writing original stuff. So it's more it's more creative juice in it right now. The music which has now been produced, instrumentation also has improved. The vocal styles and arrangement has also been improved. So much improvement in the dance style, you know. It's a frenzy. Coming up in part three, we take a look at the cultural side of reggae. And we also reveal some of the names to keep an eye out for in the future. Just give me the light. 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 Since its creation, New York has been a melting pot for a variety of cultures from around the world, including those from the West Indies. Each generation has embraced American life while retaining their own unique culture, from food and clothing to music and dancing. Reggae music is pretty big in New York right about now. I believe that it's not like only one culture. It's not just um, Puerto Ricans and blacks. It's whites. It's um, Asian people. There's a lot of Asian people here now. You know, it's really big. It's spreading. You see it on videos now. You, you never used to see videos. You know, there would have to be like a separate show, a reggae video show. Well, with my generation age group, like 18 to 25, who come back from, you know, Jamaica, Jamaican or his um, Caribbean background, usually keep their cultural um, um, foundation because it's like it's, it's a part of them, you know? Man a bad man, we no really give a damn. Send them to Satan from them a be a gun. Now this the program, now this the slogan. Bring in the gal and make a fling on the children. The whole culture has been embraced um, by New York and, and America and the world, you know. So, I mean, you can't escape it. It's everywhere right now. <laughs> Reggae run New York City right now. Absolutely. The dance and music and the dance and scene in places like New York, Miami, Atlanta, anywhere the Caribbean communities are alive, you always find the reggae music and music from the Caribbean com countries alive also. The reason why reggae is blown up in New York is because of the Sean Paul um, success and the American using the dancehall beats like you know Buster Rhymes, those guys using the Jamaica culture in, in the American culture, and it's like it's like it's a new sound for the American people. In New York, you have different kind of dancehall culture. You have like the Bashman dances. That's where the girls all get dressed up and go out and it's mostly uh, it's mostly a hang out, chill out thing. Then you have the rude boy dances. That's where you have the sound clashes, where you have the sounds like bass, or they say Kilimanjaro, Addis, they all go and clash, and you know, it's, that's mostly guys go to that, and it's, you know, it's more a road boy thing, you know? So that, that's how it is. And then, then you have the regular, you like the club scene, you know? That's just basically just a reggae mix down, you know, different variety of music. New York is so big on the, the Caribbean culture, so many Caribbean people that live in New York, so I feel like the more, hip-hop DJs, the more that hip-hop DJs can take a stance on playing reggae more in their set when they do hip-hop clubs, the more that this, 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 this thing can be bigger than what it is. Reggae music is not just just music, it's a culture, you know, it's how people live, you know what I'm saying? Because whether they go behind the mic and talk about stuff that happened in the ghetto, 
or they go behind the mic and talk about a girl. It's what they see, you know? It's what they see on the street. It's nothing that's made up. With the new video uh, with Sean's Get Busy record, just people seeing the other aspect of the culture, like, you know, the, the beating on the furnace, the noise that's made, the food that's eaten, the father coming downstairs, telling everyone to go home, all those kinds of things. Again, you know, people who are not from the culture and don't really know that still watch it and say, whoa, I feel like those aspects of the culture being seen, we really give them what's true to it as opposed to what people thought reggae music was and what they thought those visuals should be and giving them something that's a lot more honest and speaking to the music, speaking to the culture and speaking to the people. Stop banging on the damn furnace. You hear me now? This is the last time. Well, let's get it on till the early morning. God, it's all good. Just turn me on. Yo, shake that thing, miss. Can I, can I shake that thing? Yo, Annabella, shake that thing, miss. Donna, Donna, yo, miss. Jordi and the one named Rebecca, yo. Now that they can relate to it, they want to be a part of it. They want to be a part of a culture. Because just as reggae is a culture, and dancehall is a culture, hip hop is also a culture. But all of it's coming from one, you know, so you find out that everything is coming more together and less separated. Versus like back in the days when I came to America and I used to listen to reggae, they used to be like, turn off that coconut music. We don't want to hear it. So you find that, you know, people are more accepting towards the music and accept it toward the culture because it's becoming one. The party scene is, it's loud. It's, you know, carnival people got whistles and flags and they jump around and they, and you, you know, you walk up to a woman and you whine on her waist and, you know, it's just kind of, you know what I'm saying? The food is intricate, it's right there. You, you have your roti, you get your patty, you get your doubles, you get your sorrel, you get your Irish, you know what I'm saying? Like, all these different islands have got different variations and different things and, and, and uh, the house parties, it's a lot more rambunctious, it's a lot more, uh, it's not just go to a party, turn a record on, dance, put on another record. It's, there's someone on the mic, there's someone say do something. The crowd is involved in what's happening. It's a very, you know, active situation. So, you know what I mean? I go to parties out here and I see the way things happen. They don't really have that. And I miss that from home. So I bring it with me and bring it in through the videos. Dancing in dance hall has changed a lot. Uh, anyone used to feel free to just get out and just shuffle their foot, you know, in a dance situation. Now it's specialized, honey. I mean, from ever since Bogo, you know, when it was like, you had to know how to Bogo. Then we've recently had the log on and the zip it up on the higher level. These are pretty special, specific dances, you know, and you have to be dressed enough like Rand Spandex as a girl to be able to do that, too. That is why they parry to my things And them searching, them searching Like birds we lift them wings Hear them searching, them searching That is why they duplicate the swings And them searching, them searching Listen to the songs that swing so What makes reggae concerts to me so special is the is number one, the energy you get from the artists. Number two, you're not seeing 50 and 60 people on stage. You know, I wish more hip hop artists could just come on stage by themselves instead of 50 and 60 people on stage. Um, you get the energy, you feel what they feel, and the music is so universal. It, we, we categorize it as reggae Caribbean music, but it's so universal. You had so many mixtures of people there. You had the Caribbean crowd, but you also had the, you know, the, the Yankee American crowd. You had the you know, the white crowd, you had the Asian crowd. I mean, it's, 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 it's the one form of music that's so universal. Many dangers could still lie ahead for reggae music. Some critics feel that there may still be a temptation to capitalize on reggae's recent popularity by watering down the music and not investing in its roots. One of the things that could possibly stunt the current resurgence is what happened possibly a few years ago, which is there are many labels that would jump into reggae and uh, not really understand sort of the roots of where it's coming from and, and try to change things too much and, and lose your base. I think. Uh, if you if you lose your base in, 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 in any of this thing that we're doing, I think you're gonna you're gonna eventually 
erode the popularity of the music. So I think that's going to be uh, an interesting thing to see how that developed. The only thing that will limit where reggae is going are the players.